it's <laughs> the same as they've been saying for the last two months. It's yeah. Pretty much you're screwed. I mean, if you don't have high seniority, you're 15 bucks an hour, you don't have to take it. It's either take 15 bucks an hour or you're done. You've been off work for a year and a half and you're supposed to say, what choice you got? What are, what's your seniority status? 03, December of 03. So the borderline of being forced to a uh, large town. Borderline, how it? Um, like 50 people away, probably. Oh, I see. That so they have to. I heard. Okay. What, uh, do you have any sense of what you would do if that decision was do or die? I would probably end up going to Lordstown. I mean, probably take the 4500 and just put in for anything else. Because, I mean, I've been out of work for, it'll be a year and a half by the time that you'll come back up here, so. Yeah. Did, um, was there any more discussion about the fact that nobody got much of a say on the... Uh, they did, but they say they told us it was part of the special addendum, but they never actually told us until October. You know, we voted on this, two, what, a year and a half ago, two years ago, and nothing was ever mentioned about cutting pay or the two-tier going up that high. It's always been, we're going to have 20% in a plan, never 40 and then I guarantee it's going to go higher than that. Yeah. As much people as are forcing out of there, it's going to go way past. And they're not going to let any one tier transfer back in. So it's, I mean, they've already, I, they're already up into the old sixes. And there was, what, 300 07s? Because they're letting people to turn it down. Yeah. You know, which that was never a rule before, but. Is there anger at local leadership about communication so, something something was a, a miss it seems like they're just not telling us you know there's a lot of people mad right now I mean, and people come in to try to do anything and they're telling them out of order you know uh, oh out of order oh, really yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. or you know you got people that were working in different plants and they're not allowing them to come into the union meeting they end up coming in because we had to vote on it you know like my girlfriend's in Ypsilanti she is laid off from here temporarily working somewhere else but didn't want to let her in a union meeting wow yeah That's... so you had a lot of people standing outside until we voted for them to come in to see their own union meeting because they're wow. temporarily paying union dues somewhere else it's one big it's one union though right You're, isn't that the idea that's it's supposed to be well, Lots. I mean, all the money goes supposedly because you're paying you need to do somewhere else you don't count wow this is what i was you know when i walked in they stopped me at the door they wanted to see my id they would not let me walk past the table i have never had to show my id to go to a union meeting before and if you weren't a union member you couldn't come in at any other time you could bring your kids and your spouse into a union meeting. Wow. They were telling people, they were turning them away, telling them, no, you can't come in because you're not a union member. What? Wow. <laughs> yeah. My name is Jason Greenway. Um, I'm a 2007 here at Orion, and uh, pretty much what happened was uh, all of us that got hired in 2007 under the full wage are going to come back as tier twos, making half of what we used to make. So that's pretty much the gist of what happened, and a lot of people are uh, moving down to Ohio with wrong information. And uh, What do you mean by wrong information? They were told one thing, uh, that if they turned it down, their chances of coming back here were slim to nil, and then after they signed their paperwork to go, they uh, changed it. And uh, now they're stuck moving down there with uh, really no chance of coming back. So. Wow. So you know pe you know people in that situation, or is, is that what? you? Is that you, or are there you know people in that situation? Yep. Oh yeah. I I turned it down. I can't. Uh, you know, a lot of people can't afford to pay their mortgages up here and pay rent on an apartment down there. Can't sell your house up here because nobody's gonna buy a house in Detroit. So. It came down to I'd have to pay my mortgage here and rent down there, and it just doesn't make sense for a lot of people. And a lot of people uh, are going to be uh, broke because uh, they forced them all down to Ohio. But you are going to have to take the pay reduction, right? 
by yep. staying here. Yeah, I'm gonna be making uh, that tier two pay, you know, and gonna have to make it work until uh, hopefully something happens. Maybe is I mean, were there things that you had planned? I mean, how how does that change your life or your what you? you How's that change my life? Yeah. Uh, it's gonna be scraping to get by. You know, I have a family here. I have, I'm getting married in May, and uh, gonna have to probably put that off. Um, can't pay all my bills now, and uh, you know, gonna have to try to talk, help, have family help me buy food. You know, because I have a house here I can't sell that I bought under the assumption I'd be making the tier one pay. Cut that in half. I lose half my pay, you know, and everything suffers because of it. Everything. I mean, it sounds like, you know, they talk about the the innovative uh, language in the contract is is not being very clearly conveyed to the membership here, and then you're talking about misinformation about the actual Lordstown situation. That's it seems like there's a lot of miscommunication happening between the local leadership, the na international leadership, well, and the membership. A lot of what has come out recently was kind of stuff we didn't really see. They kind of just gave us one little sheet of paper, sign this if you want to agree to it. It didn't go into detail about what innovative pay would be, you know. And in the contract that we did in 2007, it said that tier one employees would not be forced down to tier two pay. And now they're telling us we weren't forced to do it, we volunteered to do it. You know, so it's clever wording like that that's letting them get around a lot of things such as pay and whatnot. I mean, just that, that's their anger about oh, the, what oh, the, yeah. the, the nature of the leadership? or A lot of people are angry for a lot of reasons, such as, you know, while we're getting our pay cut, the union leadership's getting raises, you know, and a lot of talk is a conflict of interest now with the union, because now they own part of General Motors, you know, they want to see the, the company make money, because that'll boost their stock prices, and now it's at a point where the union really doesn't need union dues to keep the lights on. You know, they have billions and billions of dollars in stock options, in stocks in General Motors. They don't, it doesn't seem like they care if we're tier one or tier two because they're making their money off stocks now. You know, and they're not going to tell us that, but that's just kind of what a lot of people are talking, talking about, that they're, you know, their priorities are with management now rather than the workers. I heard that there was some proposal to have the leadership have their pay cut in half here yeah that was brought up in the meeting and they dodged it you know and they asked from somebody asked for a motion to have it reviewed or whatever to have uh, have the same proportion of union leadership take the pay cut they dodged the issue and uh, whether or not it ever happens is anybody's guess is there a, you think there's a strategy to prevent them from dodging I mean it it's always been said that you know the membership is the true leadership of any union. Uh, how do how do you bring that to bear on you know the 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 the, the, the structure of, of the union itself? You think that it's possible? Um, I think as far as the union goes, a lot of things have changed. Uh, it used to be when I first hired in, it used to be uh, the membership would get to vote on anything. You know, any little thing that would come up that they wanted to amend the the, uh, the contract would be brought to a vote. And a lot of things now, such as pay cuts, it seems was a lot of backroom negotiating between the union leadership and, man and GM management. So, I can't remember what your question was, but hopefully that kind of... Well, I mean, how, do, how does out of the rank and file exert power as a union outside of maybe even voting uh, or, or or talking their leaders into being leaders I mean is how do we exert our power on them uh, is it possible no you know we've tried we today was a, a perfect example of us trying 
uh, but that was met with a lot of the board striking it down as inappropriate and out of order and this isn't the place to do it you know so so when they're up for uh, election next time can't you they be replaced oh yeah and I and I think a majority of them will have very stiff competition to say the least right on. So, uh, I think a lot of whoever's up there now is going to they're going to have a very hard time getting reelected right on Anything else that you want to want to say or think needs to be said or understood about the situation here? The only thing I can say is uh, it's that people in the union just stick together and then hopefully it works out for the best at the end. It was uh, definitely disappointing. I found out that there's really no possibility in the current contract that I'll switch from uh, tier two to tier one. So that really sucks, honestly. Um, I went up there and I just kind of gave my two cents about, you know, the American dream and how basically if you divide the union, it's going to be a lot weaker. You know, how are we going to achieve the American dream if, you know, the union is divided or not actually having like a progressive, uh, visionary labor format to where we're actually, you know, moving forward and trying not only to stay, uh, uh, have solidarity within our own ranks, but, uh, you know, bringing in other workers. And how are we going to get other workers to come in if we are, you know, not winning better contracts for our own members? You know what I'm saying? So it's really a backward strategy and we're going to end up hurting ourselves, you know, in the long run if we don't not only have solidarity within ourselves, but try to have solidarity with all workers, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, is there anger directed at the local leadership here? I, I mean, mean, some. Everybody. It's part of the culture, man. It's part of the broader culture of everything that's going on. I and mean, people just buy into the whole culture, you know, just being kind of weak-willed and not really... The leadership is a reflection of the membership, you know what I mean? Because the membership's not being strong, the leadership's not strong, you know? It's not the leadership's responsibility, it's our responsibility. And when the union doesn't stand up, the membership doesn't stand up, then we're all screwed. And that's why we've been increasingly screwed and we have worse contracts because people aren't fighting for something. The, the membership isn't fighting. You know what I mean? If we just have the leadership fighting, what are those? Just a couple of dudes? No, we got we got thousands and thousands of members. You know what I mean? Those are the If we all fight together, then we can achieve something. But otherwise, we're screwed. Mm -hmm. I mean, is there any signs of that type of a fight back uh, among the younger workers or... No, man, your guess is as good as mine, man. I mean, I see people talk about it, people think it's a good idea, but I mean, in terms of people actually going out there and doing something, it's kind of hit or miss. You know what I mean? There's a little peeps, but it's, it's got to be really strong. It's got to be a lot stronger than just. I'm not going to end up being tier one. I think there's no possibility of that happening. You know, I might just end up doing something else. You know what I mean? Because that's why I wanted to get involved, is because I either wanted to do skilled trades or be tier one eventually. I don't want to be working for 14 to 65 for the rest of my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, no health care benefits or anything. Thing, you know. I will say I was a little concerned about the whole situation uh, when we first got here uh, where they weren't really allowing us tier two workers because if you're a tier two worker you don't get sub pay with your unemployment and they take the dues out of the sub pay and you know if you're not getting your sub pay and paying your dues you're not actually an active member and they were talking about not letting us tier two people in the, the meeting at first but they voted at, at the initial part you know like the first thing they did was voted you know what I mean we let these tier two people who are laid off and are not dues paying members not active members in it and they said everyone said yes unanimously but I just thought it was kind of messed up that they even thought that they should deny us I just went in anyway I didn't care wow. But I mean, the membership vote, like I said, unanimously were like, yeah, you know. And then Pat was like, well, who do you think? I hope, I hope you understand why we had to do this. And everyone was like, no, we don't understand. But he didn't really explain why he was trying to keep it. Well, I don't understand it. Right, you know? wow. Just honestly, man, I mean, if, if the labor movement is going to be effective at all in achieving the American dream for us and be relevant and, and, and helping out workers not only in America but all over the world and we gotta we gotta come together. It's about us doing something. Uh, as workers, not just waiting for the leadership. You know what I mean? It's going out, you know, piss off the people in power. You know what I mean? You, you, you're never gonna gain anything by letting the people in power be comfortable. And I'm not just saying oh the UAW leadership. I'm saying the, the corporations, the government, anyone who's in power, man, they're comfortable with the way things are, you know, and unless we make them uncomfortable, the people, the little people, the, 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 the small guys, they ain't going to get anything. They like us where we're at, you know. Mm -hmm. so I guess that's pretty much it.